8484. You'll be glad you did. I know I am. Ocala Aviation. Call today, 861-7484. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! All right, five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this morning, Wednesday morning. Nice looking day out there. Hope you're doing well. You know, one of these days, Robin, I, I, I have a bucket list thing I want to do. I want to take a plate uh-huh. to New York. Yep. I want to take the plate to a church in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. It's the church I was baptized in, christened in. I don't even know what you call it. But it was a church <laughs> on a... On a I, I was born when my family lived in the Bronx. And uh, I think they moved to Levittown on Long Island when I was two. So I don't really remember the Bronx. Uh-huh. But I have... You know, my family would always talk about the Bronx. I was not the, the oldest, so I don't remember it at all. My older brothers do. And... Uh, Anyway, so this book that we're going to talk about right now called Just Kids from the Bronx is, I don't know, just something about it that makes me feel like I know these people. In fact, we've spoken to one of them, right? Yes, Carl Reiner. Carl Reiner. And and was there another person here who uh, wrote something that we were familiar with? Oh, yes. uh, Sue Monk Kid, Secret Life of Uh, Bees. Arlene Alda is on the phone, and uh, her book is called Just Kids from the Bronx, Telling It the Way It Was, an oral (laughs) history. Uh, She is also, in addition to a talented writer, apparently lots of books that are her name. Yes. Uh, She plays clarinet. Isn't that wonderful? fascinates me, too. I'm saying I'm a big Woody Allen fan, too. (laughs) Woody Allen plays clarinet. Yeah. Was Woody Allen from the Bronx? I don't, I don't know where I hope it. so. Good morning, Arlene. How are you? Woody is, I'm fine, thank you. Woody is from Brooklyn. Oh, from Brooklyn. Well, well Brooklyn. Yeah, the, other, the other borough with a B. <laughs> the other borough with a B. Yeah, my dad was from Brooklyn. My mom was from the Bronx. And oh, a well, mixed marriage, I see. Mixed marriage, yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah, I got a plate. My, my mom and dad bought a plate from the church. I guess it was a fundraising thing. Uh-huh. And it's, it was sitting in my mom's kitchen forever. It was hanging on the wall and when my mom was getting close to dying she said tell me what you want i'll give you everything you know whatever you say i said mom i don't want anything you're never gonna die anyway that's right of course she did die and and i I, the one thing i said to her was i'd like the plate so i have the plate (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna deliver it uh arlene do you still live in the bronx Hi. No, we live in Manhattan. Oh, okay. Uh, the, but I visit the Bronx, and the, you know, it's you don't need a passport to get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Do you? Do you? Um, are you friends? You're friends with everybody in the book, of course. But were you friends when you were kids? Well, actually, I'm not friends with everyone in the book, but I made friends with everyone in the book because they're really a terrific gr- group of people. Uh, there were a few people I knew prior to to interviewing them for the book. You know, there are 64 different people in the book. I know, but, uh, I know. Yeah. Uh, like like uh, Regis Philbin is a friend of ours, and, and he actually, he was, of course, brought up in the Bronx, uh, but he and, he and we ended up in the same building in Manhattan uh, on the same floor. So we, we live across the, the, the hall from one another in oh, our that right? Manhattan oh, building. wow. Yeah, that's kind of fun. So how did, a gr- uh, how did a girl from the Bronx play for the Houston Symphony? How did that happen? Oh, you know, for all, the, well, I think it's the same way now, but for every orchestra, there are national auditions. And I was playing in a training orchestra in New York City, uh, something that actually doesn't exist anymore. And there was a bulletin board with, with posts, you know, uh, auditions today, uh, Leopold Stokowski Houston Symphony. So I auditioned and I got in. So I was oh, cool. very fortunate. So yeah. did you have to live oh, in Houston? Wow. <clears throat> Oh well, I it, yes, yes. <laughs> Where the symphony was. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have to, huh? <laughs> wow, I feel like I feel like I already like know you. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I feel like I know you just already, oh, just this well, little chat. It, well, it's because we're from the Bronx. That's you think the, that's, that's what it is? The magic ingredient, yeah. It, <laughs> do you know you did? And laughing, <laughs> laughing is good. <laughs> do, do you consider this is not really a memoir? Um, but but Carl's book, Carl Reiner's book, is a memoir. But he did the same thing you did. He spoke more about other people than he did himself. Yes. Well, actually, with with my book, I didn't so much speak about them as interview them and then put each chapter 
in their words. So the, each chapter is a story told by that particular person in their words in the first person. So uh, it, it's uh, it, what you get is a, a picture of the person in that place, the Bronx, in a particular time period, because uh, what I did was start with Carl Reiner at 93, but then end with a 22, 23-year-old Eric Zeidler, a naturalist. And so during that arc, you get uh, different decades and and what what the kids were doing when they were born in the uh, you know 30s 40s 50s right. 60s now, 70s, help, 80s. Help, just help me out here i always confuse naturalist and nature yeah. <laughs> one one of them is one of them is naked all the time what is yeah. what is Eric? Is he the one that's well, naked? Well, I never saw I never saw Eric naked, so he must be a naturalist. He's a herpetologist. Oh, so that means he eats seeds. He eats a lot of seeds. Yeah. Okay. No, a herpetologist, <laughs> right? <laughs> He's a snake, snake and turtle man. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, was it very difficult to put your story in the book? Did you feel uh, intimidated by some of the stories? Uh, not at all. <laughs> that tells you a lot about myself. <laughs> well, you're no. very honest in your description. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to talk about this book without sounding like we're name dropping, but Al Pacino is in the book. Yeah. Yes. Are you, fr- yeah. are you, fr- are you friends with him? Well, we're, we're, we're friends, uh, but we're not close friends, but we certainly know one another. And he, he was very friendly and very sweet to have given me the interview. Were, uh, he, yeah, go ahead. Were, were, were they nervous when you asked them if you could interview them for a book? Because sometimes people are very uh, private and their persona isn't what it is on the screen or in, or, or in, in any public gathering. Yeah, well... If they were, they didn't let on. <laughs> I think <laughs> I think everyone in the book was really very forthcoming, very candid, very honest. Um, it was it, actually it was touching for me because most of the people in the book I did not know personally. I knew their names or I knew about them, uh, didn't know them personally, and here they were telling me. Um, stories of childhood that perhaps they hadn't told before, hadn't thought of before. Wow, wow. And uh, that that intimacy I, I found very touching because they did trust me. And, uh, of course, I tried not to uh, to abuse that trust. The, the stories are all, um, you know, they're all wonderful, I think. And so, they're, you know, they're told by these 64 different wonderful people from the Bronx. So tell me about your childhood in the Bronx. And I'm, I'm, I'm asking this kind of a selfish reasons because I, I never really experienced it, you know? Right. Right. Well, uh, I was uh, to put it into context. I was born in 1933, so my childhood in the Bronx that was really mine, where I wasn't being pushed around in a baby carriage, <laughs> was in the 40s. You know, during World War II. Oh, okay. And okay. during that time, uh, no television, very few cars in the streets. I lived in a, a part of uh, a part of the Bronx which was much more. Tranquil. It wasn't very high saturation in terms of people. Streets were broad, uh, five blocks from the Bronx Park. Although the building we lived in uh, had 96 apartments. So you multiply that, each apartment by at least two, you know, with at least two people in it or three yeah, or four, right, right. you know. So it's a, a lot of kids were what in street? that What's, one building. What street did so you grow up on? Okay, it was in the northeast, uh, an intersection of two streets called Barnes Avenue and Arno Avenues, near Allerton Avenue, which was the subway stop. Oh, okay. My my uh, mom lived on Katona. Do you remember? Do you know where Katona Avenue is? Okay, I. Uh, That's near the cemetery. There's a big cemetery there. Okay, not sure. Okay, okay. okay. I'm not sure where it is. I'll have to go to Google Maps and look up your your yes. area. <laughs> uh, one of the interesting <laughs> stories that Larry's mom told was that they lived across the street from Norman Rockwell, and she said he was a fine person. Well, that was in Vermont, though. Oh, Vermont. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, That's where she I went wish, for the summer. I wish, 
yeah, I wish uh, <laughs> we could claim <laughs> Norman Rockwell <laughs> from the Bronx. You know what? You know what your book reminds me of. Have you ever seen the thing Jerry Seinfeld does called "Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee"? No. No? Oh, you got to check oh. it out. But in a way, yeah. it's a TV version of, of sim- similar to what you've done. Well, not TV. It's not TV. It's internet. It's not even TV. But, yeah. but it's still fun to watch. But the common denominator is that they're all comedians. In your case, the common denominator is they're all from the Bronx. And, right. and Robert, oh gosh, I forgot his name now. The comedian. Robert Klein. Robert Klein yes. also yeah. is featured on one of his uh, interviews that he did at a coffee shop or whatever. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that so, sounds fun. He's he's wonderful. He's he of course you mentioned he's in the book, and uh, he had an, a very interesting story in that, you know, uh, like all Bronx kids, we're brought up in uh, you know most of us were brought up in some kind of apartment building, although there were uh, what we call and there still are private houses. Uh, throughout the borough, mostly concentrated in the north or northeast. and But m- most of the kids in the a- apartment buildings then went out to play in the street. Well, Klein loved the street games, but a part of him was was very wistful for the country, even though he was not a country kid. And as soon as he could, he moved out to Westchester County, where he has a view and grass. And, you know, he pictured himself as sure. a kid on a white horse, sure. it's a, it's, you know, <laughs> galloping across the field. It's the opposite, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well yeah. You, tr- tell me, right now I live in an area that is considered rural in, in Florida. And everybody yes. here, they all want to go to New York. Yes. And I said, well, oh. people from New York, they want to move away. They want- <laughs> <laughs> you know, not anymore. Not anymore. That's the great thing. Well, not only in, in New York. I mean, all the boroughs are kind of, uh, you know, up there. They're really, you know, the city is great. And the Bronx is great. Although it's the poorest borough of, of the five right now. There are five boroughs in New York City. Uh, it, it is up and coming, and it's the one borough where you can still now get affordable housing. You know, it's, it's, uh, I think it's probably easier to get affordable housing in Florida, although I'm speaking as a total stranger. But in New York, it's very, very Comparatively difficult. so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to make sure we uh, can... T- I want to ask about your mom and dad, because sure that had, yeah. had a big yeah. role. But we have to take a little break. Arlene Alda is on the phone with us. Her book is wonderful. It's called Just Kids from the Bronx. I became an immediate fan. Uh, I haven't heard the clarinet playing yet. No. But, <laughs> but, but I became an immediate fan. I just love the way you write. Right, and uh, so we'll take a little break, and we'll be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident for today. A warm day with sunshine and some building clouds. There can be an afternoon thunderstorm in spots. High 82 at the coast, 87 inland. And partly cloudy tonight, though 63 to 67. Mostly sunny and pleasantly warm tomorrow. High 83 at the coast, 89 inland. For Friday, partly sunny and warm. Watch out for a thunderstorm in the afternoon. The high 85 to 89. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Are you wasting hundreds or thousands of dollars on termite retreat fees? If you're not with Turner Pest Control, you probably are. Turner Pest Control offers the industry's only termite and pest control package that never charges retreat fees, ever. You can get started today for only $99. This is a value of $500 or more. This includes treatments, installation of monitoring stations, quarterly pest control, and a lifetime guarantee, all for an unbelievable low $99. Even if you have another pest control provider, visit turnerpest.com to find out how you can avoid paying those high termite retreat fees. Are you tired of not using your home's outdoor space for entertaining or relaxation because of all the bugs and leaves? Consider adding a beautiful screen room or glass enclosure. We are Superior Aluminum and Design, a family-owned and operated business with 20 years experience in the aluminum industry. And we are accredited by the Better Business Bureau. If you appreciate superior workmanship, call Superior Aluminum and Design at 817-8058 or visit us on the web at superioraluminumdesign.com. Cookies, 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 cookies. Wait, when you want something cookies, special cookies. and fun for any occasion, get cookies. That's right. The Great American Cookie Company in the Paddock Mall Ocala will make a delicious, fun-filled delight just for you. You might notice that I said fun and delicious more than once. That's because I can't say it enough. The next time you're at the mall, be sure and stop by or call 352-237-2557 to place your order. Cookies, cookies, Yum. cookies, cookies. We go cookie eating cookies. The Great American Cookie Company. 
Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 10.30 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller, right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. All right. <laughs> the commercials seem like they take so long when you have a good interview going I on. know. Arlene Alda is on the phone. Her book, again, is called Just Kids from the Bronx. Arlene, thank you for waiting through the break. Uh, a pleasure. I, you... I listen with interest to your commercials. <laughs> 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 do, do, do you know what I did during the break? I went to uh, Google Maps and I found Barnes and uh, Arno Avenue. Oh, and, nice. And you're 11 minutes away from Katona Avenue. Which is when, okay. Yes, yeah, so and now, okay. and, and that's to the north of Woodlawn Cemetery. Okay. Just to now, like tell the, you, you put your finger on something interesting. When you when you live in a neighborhood in the Bronx, you don't venture out. I mean, that's your world. <laughs> Everything is there that you need. You have all the. You have your school. You have you know your 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 stores, your playgrounds, your places of worship. Your you know everything is there. So. For me to have wandered anywhere else, 11 minutes, uh, you know, out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I remember those days. I remember we had to go someplace in New York but compared to like now. Like now you drive two hours to, to Orlando, no big deal. Right. You know, back then you said, well, why would I need to go two hours from here? Two hours is like another universe, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, that's absolutely true. Did, did you want to know about my parents? Exactly. My house? Yeah. That's exactly. Okay. Yeah. What did, you, um, what did they do for a living? What did your dad do and your mom do? Okay. My parents were immigrants from Eastern Europe. Uh, they were Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe. And they, so, and they moved. They met in New Haven, Connecticut, and moved somehow from there to the Bronx. And when they moved, uh, I think they moved twice. When I was born, I was born into that large building with the 96 people, you know, families, apartments, whatever. And uh, so that was my universe. My father was a lithographer, a commercial lithographer. And so he worked in, I never knew exactly what he did because I never saw it. If I had seen it, I may have had a, uh, you know, uh, some impression that was was uh, indelible. But I never saw him do it, so I didn't know exactly what the machinery was. Right, or, right, right. You know exactly what the process was. And so that but uh, and he so, was in the arts. Basically, okay, so that and lithography is like like photography with dots, right? Is that the, the best? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I thought so. Yeah, I never understood how that worked. I was always amazed because they would have these little blocks. That they printed from, mm -hmm. they look, yeah, yeah, you know, like a little, you know, like I don't know, and you can see a photograph, like a, a negative. I don't even know how they work. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so, oh gosh, I had a question for you about that. So this was this was in a factory where they made labels for the American Can Company. You know, like tomato can labels. Oh. You know, okay. those were lithographed or still are. I guess it would have to uh -huh. be, yeah. Which is uh, the thing, Andy Warhol. Uh, Made famous, yeah. I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and you know, so and my mother was a homemaker who was an expert uh, seamstress. Is that right? How did you meet? Yeah, your, and we, and, yeah I'm sorry. How ahead. did you meet your husband? How did you guys meet? Yeah, we met through a, a mutual friend in New York City. Uh, we both had been to Europe the the year before, and so we had a lot to talk about. Um, and the, and we we were at a dinner party where the rum cake that the hostess had baked was uh, hanging out on the top of a refrigerator in the kitchen. And as the evening wore on, the cake seemed to have worked its way from the middle of the top of the refrigerator to the edge and then splat down to the floor. <laughs> Why? Was it vibrating? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A vibrating refrigerator. refrigerator. Okay. Right. The motor went on and it went blah, 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 plop. Oh, and no. And Alan and I were the only two people who went into the kitchen with our spoons and ate it off the floor. <laughs> oh. How old were you? How old were you? How old were you, how old were you at that how time? Old? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know, we were grown-ups. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Okay. I was, you know, that was a year before we were married. So, you know, I was in, in my early 20s. He was 20. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, it was, you know, we 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 knew better, but but we didn't know better, and it was wonderful. It was, How did, it was 
right. How did you and Alan never become tabloid subjects? How did that happen? How did you avoid that whole mess? Oh, well, we didn't have anything to talk. <laughs> but I can, but I can to talk about. But I can, but see what's going to happen now is the Enquirer is going to say, you know, Alan Alda and his wife ate cake off the floor. That's right. Right. Yeah. yeah dirty. Yeah. No, they'll have the headline: Dirty People. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, you have uh, very amusing stories, but you also have one in particular by uh, Anonymous, and yes. you. You really yeah. allowed that person to bear their soul. That must have been great therapy. Yeah, well, it was interesting. I didn't want to stop anyone from saying the truth. And so I didn't have uh, conversations with them where I had a whole set of, of questions. We talked. And basically, in the talking, questions uh, would arise, you know, I would ask. You know, so this uh, person who was identified as anonymous was was talking, and I said, "Well, why why were you such a, a loner? You do, you know, all the kids I knew uh, in the Bronx hung out with loads of kids, and this particular person, anonymous, uh, did not, and she only had her cousin who was a friend." And basically, she said, "Oh, didn't I tell you?" And and the question I asked was, "What? What didn't you? T you know, what didn't you tell me?" And the answer was, "Well, you know, the, uh, basically, her father sexually abused her for years, and it affected her, of course, in in uh, many ways, as you can imagine. But that story I felt was also an important story to tell." Because these are the stories you say, oh, everyone was so wonderful, they were so happy, they were, you know, that was peacetime, that was this, it was that. You, no one knows what really goes on That's behind true. closed doors. That is absolutely true. And, uh, yeah, and, and children, of course, are our most vulnerable citizens. So, uh, yeah. again, I felt that was a, an important story to tell. And so. she told it. So how's you know, she didn't tell what she told was her life uh, as a kid, and not dwelling on those incidents. But you get through her, uh, through her personality, what the effect was on her. And how's life for you now? Life for me is fantastic. As a matter of fact, Alan is out plugging a movie that he's he's in called The Longest Ride. Is that right? Which is just opening, uh, I think it may have opened or will open. I mean, it's imminent, imminent. And and life is great. I mean, uh, how can we complain? Do we're you know, healthy and we're, we, we actually like one another. That's great. That is wonderful. Do you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how, he, how you or he will take this, but I have often thought that your husband and Howard Stern have a similar voice. Oh, that's so funny. Well, you know, we take it well. Howard Stern also lives in our building. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh he does? Okay. <laughs> but did you I ever... love Howard. <laughs> you, Howard, and, and Regis. <laughs> in the same building. Yes. Has anybody... We have a great building. The elevator is a lot of fun. <laughs> I want to move in. I want to be in your building. So, so ha have you ever had that said to you, though, before? Has anybody ever said that your husband sounds like... Uh, how it's, how it's no, no, but that's that's very interesting. I have to next time I hear him, I have to, Howard actually has a very deep resonant voice, and and Alan has a uh, a very I can't describe his voice. Well, that's because you sleep next to him. <laughs> 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 it sounds different because of that. <laughs> I uh, liked uh, one of the quotes in your book from uh, uh, Mickey Drexler when he was talking about learning. The older he gets, the more he learns every day. That that was really insightful. Yeah. I thought. Yeah, M uh, Mickey. Uh, he he's really a great guy. He's the CEO of J Crew, and he was the inspiration for the book. Actually, now this is small world talk. Mickey uh, grew up in my same building, but. I never knew that. Now, why didn't I know it? I, you know. How I'm do you know everybody in the building? That's, <laughs> you, that's some, She's some Arlene. Things. She knows everybody. In the <laughs> Arlene, you are you are a delight. Thank you so much for being on with us. The book the book is called Just Kids from the Bronx. Arlene Alda, a uh, go buy the book. How do we buy? Do you have a website for the book? 
uh, yes, there's there's a website. There's a, a author Facebook page. There's my own website, uh, ArleneAlda.com. Um, enjoy the book. Thank you, Arlene. Thank we you. certainly enjoyed the interview. That was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys, so much. Thank right. you. We'll be Bye-bye. right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. Very caring, very loving. Judy Scott, mother of Walter Scott, shot and killed by white police officer Michael Slager in North Charleston, South Carolina. A video shows Scott stopped for a broken brake light, apparently being shot in the back. We've got 343 police officers in our department. This is a bad decision by one of those. Mayor Keith Summey, a U.S. soldier killed, at least two wounded by an Afghan soldier. It happened after a meeting involving a U.S. embassy official and local leaders in eastern Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Stan Freeberg has died, known for his satiric commercials and comedy recordings like St. George and the Dragonette. On September the 5th, the dragon was tried and convicted. His fire was put out and his maiden devouring license revoked. Freeberg won a Grammy and nearly two dozen Clio Awards for his ads. He was 88. Fox News, we report, you decide. And now, another golf confessional, brought to you by Golfsmith. A man said he recently informed his wife he's going to start waxing his chest, only because the waxing place is right near Golfsmith, and they're about to have trade-in days. For a limited time only, when you trade in your old clubs, you get a 50% bonus towards new ones. He's got a lot of clubs to trade in, so he's going to wax his chest, eyebrows, back, and, well, just check out trade-in days at Golfsmith. Anything for golf. This is an announcement for all people who want to take a risk-free challenge to whiten their teeth in five minutes using clinically proven power swabs. This risk-free challenge is for people whose smile has been yellowed by coffee, tea, or smoking. It's so effective, we challenge you to try it for five minutes to see how white your smile could be. If lines are busy, try again. Dial one 800 6 facials also. So if you've been searching for a salon to call your own, come and see us at Hello Gorgeous Salon. We are located at 48 South Magnolia Avenue in downtown Ocala, right next to the Marion Theater. So call today and set up your appointment at Hello Gorgeous Salon at 351-5358. 